All right, so in this video, we're going to look at the Girard-Newton formulae for a quadratic. So our general quadratic, we're going to write as ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So any quadratic can be written in this way. And I'll just add as a reminder here that the roots of this polynomial, if I call them roots alpha and beta, the quadratic will have two roots in general, we know that the sum of the roots is going to be equal to minus b on a, and the product of the roots is going to be equal to c on a. So we're going to use that to derive the Girard-Newton formula. Now for the Girard-Newton formula, what we're really interested in is power sums of the roots. So power sums of the roots are going to look in general like this. So Pn, let's let Pn be the nth power sum. The nth power sum is alpha to the power of n plus beta to the power of n. So that's why it's called a power sum. It's a sum of powers of the roots. So we know that the first, the, the zeroth power sum, which is alpha to the zero plus beta to the zero, well, that's just going to be one plus one, which is equal to two. And we know that the first power sum is just alpha plus beta, because that's alpha one to plus beta to the one. And that we know is equal to minus b on a. Things begin to get interesting when we look at the second power sum. So we have alpha squared plus beta squared. And here I really want to rewrite this power sum in terms of things I know. So really I'm going to write it in terms of previous power sums or in terms of sums and products of roots. So to do that, I'm going to recognize that alpha squared plus beta squared is the same thing as alpha plus beta all squared minus two alpha beta. So here I've rewritten that power sum in terms of sums and products of the roots. So I can rewrite this as alpha plus beta outside of alpha plus beta minus alpha beta times two. And I notice that here I have a bit of a recurring pattern. Alpha plus beta is p1 and 2 is p0. So I can rewrite p2 as alpha plus beta, which is minus b on a, p1, and then minus alpha beta, which is c on a, p0. Now what I really want for the Girard-Newton formula is I want to keep this process going. What I want to do is generate a recurrence relation for Pn in general. So I want to have a way of writing Pn in terms of Pn minus 1, Pn minus 2, and perhaps other quantities. So I've already noticed a pattern that looks like this in P2. I've noticed that P2 is equal to minus b over a P1 minus c over a P0. So I might guess that the pattern I'm aiming for is this in general. So Pn is going to be minus b on a Pn minus 1 minus c on a Pn minus 2. And now I'm going to prove that that is indeed the recurrence relationship we get using induction. So we want to prove that the nth power sum is minus b over a times the previous power sum minus c on a times the power sum before that. So in order to prove by induction, so we prove by induction, we already have our base case from before because we proved this for n equals 2, so we can use that as our base case. So I'll just write the gut of the induction formula, which is that we assume it's true for n. So we assume that this nth power sum is indeed what we want it to be.
and we want to show that it is also the case for n plus 1. So let's do that. We know that pn plus 1 is equal to alpha to the n plus 1 plus beta to the n plus 1. It's the n plus 1th power sum. And this is equal to alpha plus beta outside of alpha n plus beta n. So there I'm, I'm writing it in this way really to conjure up that p to the power of n, the previous power sum. But I've also created, I've conjured up some other terms that I don't want. This is no longer equal, so I need to adjust it by subtracting those extra terms I conjured up, which is alpha to the n beta minus alpha beta to the n. So I encourage you to check for yourself, perhaps by expanding this, that what I've written on the right-hand side of this equation is indeed equal to that n, n plus 1th power sum. And then at this point, I can rewrite this again as alpha plus beta, and then the nth power sum, then minus, and I'm going to factor out from this term a common alpha beta. So alpha beta, and then what I'm left with is alpha to the n minus 1 plus beta to the n minus 1. And now I can notice that this is indeed in terms of sums and products of roots, as well as previous power sums. So this is the recurrence relationship I'm after. It is indeed minus b on a p n minus c on a p to the n minus 1. So there I've proven by induction that the Newton-Girard formula for quadratics is indeed the nth power sum is given by minus b over a p to the n minus 1 minus c over a p n minus 2. Now that we've derived the Girard-Newton formula for quadratics, let's actually use it in an example. So the example question I have is, consider the polynomial 2 z squared minus 4z plus 8 equals 0. So nice quadratic there. And suppose that this quadratic has solutions x and y. What we're going to do is calculate x to the 5 plus y to the 5 without solving the quadratic. So without actually determining what x and y is, we're still going to be able to calculate x plus y to the 5. So let's see how this happens. We're going to use our power sums. So x to the 0 plus y to the 0 is equal to 2, and that's p0. x to the 1 plus y to the 1 is equal to our first power sum, that's just the sum of the roots, and that's equal to minus b over a, and for this quadratic, minus b over a is going to be minus minus 4 over 2, which is just 2. So I have that p1, my first power sum, is 2. Now we can use the Newton-Girard formula to write that p2, which is x squared plus y squared, is equal to minus b over a p1 minus c over a p0. Here I might note on the side that minus b over a, as we determined for the first power sum, is just 2, and c over a is equal to 8 over 2 is equal to 4. So I can use these two numbers to make the following calculations a bit easier. So that means that this is 2p1 minus 4p0, which is 2 times 2 minus 4 times 2. So we get minus 4 for the second power sum. Let's calculate the third power sum. So x cubed plus y cubed is again equal to minus b over a p2 
minus c over a p1, and that's going to be 2p2 minus 4p1. So that's going to be 2 times minus 4 minus 4 times 2. So that's going to give me minus 16. And now we're almost there. We're on our fourth power sum, x to the 4 plus y to the 4 is equal to minus b on a. Let's just substrate in 2. p3 minus 4p2. So that's 2 times minus 16 minus 4 times minus 4. That's going to give me minus 32 plus 16. So we're going to get minus 16 again. And then finally, our fifth power sum, x to the 5 plus y to the 5 is equal to 2p4 minus 4p3. And that is 2 times minus 16 minus 4 times minus 16. So that's going to give me plus 2 times 16. So I'm going to get 32. So what we find is that x to the 5 plus y to the 5 is equal to 32. And you can check that if you want by solving this polynomial by other means to find x and y. What you'll find is that the solutions to this polynomial are z equals 1 plus or minus uh, i root 3. So it has complex roots. And then you can calculate x to the 5 plus y to the 5 subbing in these uh, these solutions for x and y, if you want. But let's just realize what we've been able to do here using the Girard Newton formulas. We started with a polynomial with some solutions which we don't know. And just by applying this recursive formula, the Girard Newton formula, over and over again, subbing in previous results, previous power sums, and the coefficients of this quadratic, which we can see. So we don't know the roots, but we do know the coefficients. They're right there, we can see them. So just by applying this recursive formula using previous power sums and the coefficients, we were able to calculate x to the 5 plus y to the 5 without knowing x and y. So that's pretty cool.